My name is Dersu Fulimoni. I'm Mozambican and I am an agronomist by training. I have a bachelor in, agrono in agronomy with a specialization in agribusiness. I have a master's degree from the UK in agriculture and environmental science. Disability does not mean inability, therefore it simply means that even in the agricultural sector we can actually work with people with disabilities who are also just as reliable as persons without disabilities. Discrimination, when most people they think that uh, if you are on a wheelchair, uh, maybe you ride uh, with a wheelchair, uh, maybe you think with a wheelchair, uh, not knowing that uh, I only have a challenge but my mind is working. So in this episode, we are talking about persons with disabilities into agriculture. Uh, in Mozambique, uh, well, I work in a 1,400 hectares farm with the core business is uh, livestock, but uh, we do a bit of everything. We do vegetable, mostly horticulture. Uh, we're doing livestock, cat, beef, uh, pigs, poultry, layers, goats, and road runners as well. I'm, I'm also a lecturer in Faculty of Agriculture in Mozambique, where I do basically horticulture, seed production, grain production, and with a bit of, of research. Uh, but, but then uh, I've come to the rea re realization that uh, agriculture is a backbone of any nation. It's a backbone of any nation and it's where, it's where the money is, where the, where the future is. Unfortunately, in Mozambique, uh, agriculture is not being taken as a profitable activity as I'm, I come to see here in Zimbabwe. Uh, my farming journey uh, uh, began a couple of yeah, years ago. Okay. Um, uh, it started as a research um, and um, I didn't know what I really wanted to do. Okay. So uh, it was more like a, fig, a, a mixed research. Right. Uh, when I did some research on um, uh, li uh, livestock production, Cutting across, okay, livestock production, um, um, uh, crop production. Um, but after in depth research, uh, in, about in 2020, uh, and after watching a number of uh, videos uh, from other livestock producers, uh, and I, I settled my mind on piggery production. Um, uh, why? Uh, it, to me, it looked more interesting. And okay. um, when you think of piggery, uh, they are like in a pen and they are easy to manage, especially for me, unlike uh, maybe gods, uh, livestock, they will be roaming around. But piggery are like in a fixed about. So after my research and um, uh, getting enough knowledge uh, through uh, the social media, um, some journals, um, uh, um, I started to look for a land, small piece of land where I can start this project. I stay in Arare, so I started looking for a small piece of land, maybe around Arare. Okay. Yeah, in the periphery of Arare, so maybe because I wanted to reduce um, uh, the movements up and down. But unfortunately, I could not win. I could not get the small piece of land. And I decided to go raw. So I went back to my raw uh, Nyanga, the small piece of land which I got from my mother. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, I started uh, uh, developing with a piece, small piece of land, fencing it. I, um, uh, because piggery involves a lot of money, so I said maybe if I start with uh, 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 a small uh, greenhouse, uh, do cucumbers, do onion, do tomatoes, then I can to raise uh, more resources for the piggery farming. And I drew the ball uh, last year after drawing a ball. I started the, 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 the small garden, um, but along the way I discovered that this is not really what I want. I want okay. piggery. Yeah, I want piggery. In Mozambique, 95% uh, of farmers, they're just uh, smallholder farmers. Only 5% they do commercial farming or they farm uh, for commercial purposes. Just the, the remain 95 just for subsistence. And the investment is not uh, it's not uh, that uh, available for them. 
so uh, it, this is one of the things that uh, lit up the, the flame in agriculture in me and I got was invited by, 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 by my father because he also has a, a farm which is a, a 1,400 hectares of, of land into which he's trying to initiate a commercial farming. So because of my background for agriculture, I'm now uh, in charge of the farm. I'm the executive director of the farm. And the farm, the, the, the core business of the farm is, is going to be livestock. We're talking about uh, poultry, cattle, goats, uh, swine. And because of the, in terms of uh, return of investment, swine is faster. So this is where we, we, we want to focus at the early stages. That's why we we identify in the Sedek region, which is the one of the best swine production. And we came here to the Nyaga city, Pigari, which they are doing wonderful things. Not even a huge space, but you can you can see the results. They are, have come to note that there are many prizes, many awards that 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 the, 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 this farm is taking in is not just because of their excellency and we are being inspired by what's happening here and we want to see if we could uh, at least at the bare minimum replicate what is happening here and uh, we are also taking in a lot of attachment student on attachment in which we are planning to hire them to work for us this that's why we brought everyone here that we've been working on the, on the piggery section to see what's happening. As we come to learn in, in, in this training that a skilled or a trained employee, it's, it makes your life, your life easier. So by training everyone that will be dealing in the piggery, uh, it's, it's going to be easier for us to, to, to move forward. We're going to be speaking the same language. They will understand when one thing is not going the way it should be. And we already know uh, our strength and weaknesses we already know how to look for the opportunity and what are the threats in all these uh, bigger indices so basically in, in uh, basically speaking it's like in these three days of training we were able to make the whole sort analysis for what we are trying to do within our bigger we, we we realize now what, what we're doing wrong starting from the structure until for the whole system we, we didn't have a specific direction, a, a system to adopt, but now everything is, is quite clear for us. Uh, so I am a disability advocate and I work with people with different disabilities, be it sensory impairments, physical and also invisible disabilities. And myself, I've got an invisible disability, which is epilepsy. So uh, that motivated me to work a lot with people with disabilities. And I've noticed that in this world, persons with disabilities are very much discriminated. Whenever you, you approach people, you tell them you've got a disability, already people draw a picture in their minds. So I'm very much, uh, I feel inspired right now with this story because for someone with a disability and he has managed to go against all odds. Uh, I've, I've also experienced uh, a, a number of challenges, a lot of them, um, um, uh, in this journey. Um, uh, and the, most of the challenge has come from uh, the physically, uh, the physically able-bodied people uh, who look down upon um, uh, uh, if, if people who are physically challenged. Um, discrimination, uh, as I said, uh, before I started this journey of uh, pig farming, uh, I'm, I'm also a, prof a professional on, on my own right. And uh, I faced a lot of discrimination um, uh, when I, I, I when I when I finished my uh, my uh, my university education. I faced a lot of discrimination in getting my first job. It was a big handle, a big handle. And when most people they think that uh, if you're on a wheelchair, uh, maybe you write uh, with a wheelchair. Uh, maybe you think with a wheelchair, uh, not knowing that uh, it, it, I only have a challenge, but my mind is working. Uh, what matters most uh, is uh, a mind uh, which works and not the, the physical appearance or the inside appearance. 
Yeah, so I faced many challenges. As I said, getting my first job, it was a big challenge. Um, when I started the pigger in the industry, getting the, the, the land, the, 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 my, initially I wanted to get a, a small piece of land, but getting that land was a big challenge. Is uh, Maybe people thought that uh, I, 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 I go to the field with my wheelchair and not forgetting that uh, um, after acquiring all the knowledge, I can uh, uh, use uh, other people to manage, uh, to do the physical work while I'm managing the business. So yeah, there are so many challenges, uh, but it's up to us, uh, the physically challenged people, to, pr to prove people wrong, to, to tell our story and uh, prove that we can do it uh, without any uh, fear or favor. And we don't need any favoritism. Oh, just, just uh, we need is equal conditions for everyone. And uh, the results will be there for us to show the world. Another positive note, uh, the government of Zimbabwe uh, has taken disability issues uh, to the highest level. Um, disability issues are now being held uh, uh, in the present office and uh, we give applause to that. So in as much as there is a lot of discrimination, myths and, mis and misconceptions when it comes to disability, we'd like to applaud the government of Zimbabwe for introducing and launching the national disability policy that was launched in 2021. And also in 2013, Zimbabwe ratified the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, better known as the UNCRPD. So basically the UNCRPD has got different principles when it comes to disability. It looks into reasonable accommodation uh, equality, disability mainstreaming and a lot of things like that. So basically it's the rights of persons with disabilities and also uh, the national disability policy gives an adequate definition of what disability is because looking back most people didn't know that albinism is a disability, epilepsy is a disability, we've got visible and, in and invisible disabilities. So basically it also touches and looks into that. And well, uh, in Zimbabwe we also had our own disability act but now people People thought that it is now outdated because when looking at the definition it gave, it is a bit outdated and also the terms that they used when referring to disability, the terms were also a bit derogatory. So people thought that there is need to change that and meet the standards and while the government of Zimbabwe is also doing something on that because right now there is a disability bill which is being worked on and consultations are being held where persons with disabilities are also giving in information and feedback and what they think should be included in the act and what should be reform, reformed and what should be removed from the act that was there. So that is uh, quite an improvement and a step towards positivity. And also looking at issues of accessibility and reasonable accommodation. Uh, when you speak of re reasonable accommodation, we talk of accessibility, be it to information or certain environments. For instance, uh, we have got people with hearing impairments, visual impairments. Those people, despite the fact that they have those impairments, they've got a way that they use to communicate. For instance, people with hearing impairments, they use sign language. Therefore, they need a sign language interpreter wherever engagements are being held or whenever conversations are being held. The moment we do not have a sign language interpreter, we make them disabled because what we say in our society of disability is a person is not disabled until they meet a barrier or a challenge. So there is an equation we use which is impairment plus barrier is equals to disability. So basically when you're looking for maybe a person who uses a wheelchair, the moment they get to a place without a ramp, then that person has a disability. But when they get to a place where they can have accessibility to, uh, to wherever they want to go, there are ramps, there are rails, then that person does not have a disability but only has an impairment. And also uh, the National Disability Policy that was launched in 2021 looks at issues of terminology. Because looking back, you know, when people looked at persons with disabilities, they would say, people living with disabilities can in shona wona bofu iro wona mbebebe wona matsi but then in the new terminology we are trying to say let us uh, see the person first before the disability because in as much as I am disabled, it doesn't mean that I don't have my certain abilities, though they might be different from the next person. Therefore, we say, Munu, asinga oni, kwete kuti bofu. Because tikati munu, asinga oni, we are looking at the person first and then the disability later. Looking at the, at the value chain uh, uh, in, in Mozambique, Okay, because 95% of, of the 
farmers uh, sub subsistence most of them they they do it uh, because they they like to do it most of them they do it because they maybe they had the opportunity to, to acquire one, one one or two boars or sows and then they just move on they they're not doing it uh, in a professional way I mean sort of speaking if we try to focus off the the whole chain in the piggery uh, from the piglets from the the, no, from the breeders, then we have the, the, the winners, uh, we're going to have the, the, the growers, the boars and the, and the sows, the guilt as well. Uh, they are not uh, a well-developed industry in Mozambique. So they are not, uh, prof uh, how can I say, in industrial pig abattoir in Mozambique. Uh, and, and, and the butchery for, for pigs, they are, they, are, they, are, they are quite small. They are not uh, as huge as for cattle and, and for, 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 for other things. They are just uh, small, small ones for small, small business that they are there. But in terms of the agriculture uh, section as, as a whole, uh, it's starting to get a bit, a bit more developed. Uh, it's starting a bit more developed for thanks to many of, of some local de developing agencies. Uh, they are they're starting to look into seed production, which is the, the base of, 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 of everything in agriculture. They are investing a lot in seeds and in improved varieties. Now they are trying to make it a bit more mechanized to, to bring back all the, the agriculture industry that, that, that was there. So the value chain in Mozambique is there, but it's not completed, it's not connected, it's not linked. Uh, so you need to find where the, 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 the spots are. You might be in a set of chain of, 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 of the value. So for you to connect with the, 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 the next chain, you need to make an extra effort. It's not a very straightforward as yet. Like that one is doing seed production. I can go get seed from him. I can go and get fertilizer for him. I can put them together. Get, get extension service from that. It's not very straightforward. The the services are there, but they're they're, they're all scattered. What I come to see in Zimbabwe was my first time. My first interaction with Zimbabwe agricultural sector was in 2019 when I came here on a seed project. We went from Mutare up to Nyamapanda, if I'm not mistaken. We visit the whole seed production in there from different category, from the uh, the newcomers. Uh, such as, uh, uh, I think that is, uh, from, for, from the big one, the seed goes until the, the, smaller, the smaller one, such as Mukushi seeds. So we saw that the market, the value chain is there for everyone. And the way things are organized here, the farmers know that they need to get uh, certified seed from time and time together. It helps develop, to de develop the, the value chain. And that's the same thing that needs to happen in piggery industry in Mozambique. They need to understand whether they should focus their effort. If they want to go from winners to finishers, so they know where to go and to buy winners. If they want to provide the breeding stock, they know where to go to buy the, the piglet that they will then be the, used as a breeding stock, or they, they know where to go to buy the boars and, and the, and the gilt or the, or the sours. So in here, everything is much more organized much more stratified different from Mozambique and I think it's basically historical because agriculture has been well developed in Zimbabwe from decades ago in Mozambique only now people are, are trying to, to see agriculture pardon agriculture is a, a profitable activity even in academia they are trying to introduce agribusiness from early stages now Agribusiness, agribusiness, agri entrepreneurship, agribusiness, entrepreneurship. Because, and man is not just in agriculture as, as per se, as well as service providing for agriculture. They also were the, 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 the there's money. So the value chain is more developed here in relation to Mozambique. In Mozambique, they see an effort to be put together to link all the, all the values. Because right now, they are scattered. Mozambique and Zimbabwe, they are, Two neighboring country with uh, pretty much close to similar climate. Uh, they've been a friendly nation for many decades now, and uh, 
this country, in my opinion, they should be cooperating more in many regards. They are still they are cooperating, but things should be a bit more broadened and everything. In we, are, we can talk about academia and also, also in farming. Zimbabwe University, they are, they are much older than ours. They are, they are, they are well, well, well established. And in, in Mozambique, only in the past 20 years that uh, we start getting a lot of uh, high tertiary level university, high, high, higher degrees, institution. Because for many decades, we only had the Edward Mondlane University. But here in Zimbabwe, we have many more. So but if we could collaborate more, help us uh, to improve our programs, our education system uh, and in that aspect I would emphasize like uh, practical and training, uh, technical, technical uh, programs, especially in agriculture, which Zimbabwe is a well-developed uh, sector in agriculture. Historical, yeah, everyone knows that, at least us in Mozambique, we know that in, in agricultural aspects, Zimbabwe is better than us, and we need this push for our neighbors. So we could cooperate more and have this sort of, of exchange. It's like get, get, get the experience from Zimbabwe, what, 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 which, which drivers uh, we need to, to, be, to put on the same level. Because right now, from, for more than three millions, uh, arable land that we have, we are not exploring more than 10% 10, 10 of that, which is very, 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 very few. And the, the, our, our, our farmers, our farmers, they, they don't have the habits of uh, looking for certified seed, uh, buying uh, uh, recommended fertilizers, uh, and they are not well educated, which is a different scenario in Zimbabwe. Uh, Purchase, purchase of certified seed is a, it's a it's a basic thing in Zimbabwe. Buying certified product is a basic thing in Zimbabwe, and almost every farmers they know how to how to read, how to write, which makes things easier for agricultural extension services. And this is the experience we I feel that we need from Zimbabwe. Our farmers they need they need to know that they need to invest to make money in agriculture and that's one of the things pushing us back because our farmers of course they don't have money but we need a system in, we, in which they can get money they can put the money to, to use and then they can have profit this way they will know that uh, agriculture is a business for instance uh, the farmers in Mozambique very few of them encourage their, 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 their siblings their sons uh, to, to become farmers as well because they feel like farming uh, it's a waste of time it's just a way to survive not a way, a way of, make, of making money and in here in Zimbabwe it's a different culture uh, they see farmer as a profitable activity and we need this experience to be taken from here to Mozambique this way we can exchange and we co co cooperate more and this in of course the if we look in more specific to many crop production Wheat production in Zimbabwe is a thing. In Mozambique, we, we, we are not growing wheat. We are trying now to do some research of it, but Zimbabwe is well developed in wheat production. We can just come and take this the experience. Of course, we need to look for suitable place to do that, suitable variety to grow that. So yeah, I feel like this is the sort of ex exchange that we need in terms of cooperation in farming, in academia, in and everything else because these are the for in my opinion these are the backbones for any nation to develop which is education and food production the rest will follow if you are educated and you can grow your own food the technology to grow that will simply follow it will be like an, a domino effect will just bring in on uh, the remaining uh, inputs from 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 the sectors as, as the history say like Africa Africa is the cradle of of human race and uh, size-wise Africa is simply huge and if you look in terms of climate temperature our climate temperature even in land they are extremely suitable for agriculture and food production if you look at countries like as uh, Japan which have really no zero arable land but yet they are they are growing enough 
for, for their population just because of technology. We might, we might not have that technology that they have, but we have the land.